Warning, if you don't like scary movies, just skip the next 30 seconds of this video. This is what happens to you when you're a Canadian exchanging for US dollars. So you most likely go to your foreign exchange platform. Just as you're about to make the conversion, the platform charges a fat fee on you. But you'll eventually need your Canadian dollars back, so the platform goes at you for round two. So how do we avoid a platform's foreign exchange fees when exchanging between Canadian and US dollars? Before we start, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below how much US dollars you normally bring when you travel. Normally when you want to exchange your currency, you can just search up the current rate. Right now the rate is 1.4151, which is essentially if you converted $10,000 in US, then you would get 14,151 Canadian dollars. This is often not the rate that you get to convert because your foreign exchange platform will charge a fee that's higher than the actual rate so that they can make money off of you. So say you had 10,000 Canadian dollars and wanted to convert to US dollars. Technically at the current exchange rate, you should expect to receive $7,067 in US. But the foreign exchange platform needs to make money off of you. Hi, hi Georgie and often charge around 3 cents on top of the exchange rate at around 1.4451. That means when you actually exchange, you end up only receiving $6,920 US. Well that's $147 less than before. But let's say you need the Canadian dollars back because you're fighting to buy the last stack of toilet paper, then you have to convert your US dollars back to Canadian. So previously we had $6,920. You would think that you can convert it back at the original 1.4151 exchange rate, but what actually happens is that the exchange platform charges you again. So this time converting back Hi, uh, Georgie. is 1.3851. You get less money converted back. And this time you end up with 9,585 Canadian dollars. So without even spending any of the money yet, you lost $415 from your original $10,000. And that's roughly 4% of your money. That's the rate that most investors get from high dividend stocks in a whole year. Using something called Norbert Scambit, we can save you on those fees. Even if you're not looking to convert $10,000 in Canadian cash right now, over time you might want to consider it since there's going to be a lot of instances in the future where you need US dollars, like investing in the US or going on multiple vacations to the US. Or especially if the Canadian markets keep dropping because the oil industry keeps tanking, then the value of the Canadian dollar will keep depreciating in value and then the US dollar will become more valuable to have. So how Norbert Gambit works is through investing in shares that are domiciled in both Canadian and the US. So what I mean is is that we'll be investing in shares of something that has both a Canadian version and a US version. For simplicity's sake and without major price fluctuations, people usually do Norbus Gambit using DLR and DLR-U. They're both the Horizons US dollar currency ETF, but just one is quoted in Canadian dollars and the other is in US dollars. This investment simply allows you to capture the price changes of the US dollar. So let's start again with 10,000 Canadian dollars. You would buy shares of the DLR, which at its current price, you can buy 698 shares. For a lot of people, you would incur a commission charge of $10 for buying shares. But if you use something like Quest Trade, then buying ETFs like DLR is free. Next, with your 698 shares, you would call up your investment platform and tell them to do Norbert Gambit on your shares. The easy way to say it is to tell them to journal your DLR shares over to the US side, which is DLR-U. Depending on your platform, you might be able to do this yourself on your account. So what happens is that they convert your 698 DLR shares into 698 DLR-U shares, meaning now you own the US version of DLR with the same share count. So what's the value of your US shares? So it's 698 shares times the share price of $10.13 and that's $7,071 US. Once you have your US shares, you can sell it for a small commission and then cash out your US dollars. Compare this to the $10,000 in Canadian cash you started out with. What was your exchange rate from doing Norbit Gambit? Simply is $10,000 divided by $7,071, which is 1.4142. That's super close to the actual exchange rate of 1.4151. But how did this happen? Essentially, your shares remain the same. The only thing that changed was the share price. Since we have the exact same investment on both the Canadian side and the US side, the only difference between the two share prices is the foreign exchange. If you did $14.32 of DLR divided by $10.13 of DLR-U, you get the exchange rate of 1.4136. 
The exact same thing happens in reverse if you want to convert your US dollars back to Canadian dollars. You can buy the DLR-U shares and then journal that back to DLR. You get the same number of shares, but with the Canadian version, you can sell it and then cash out your Canadian dollars. Although right now you might not see a need to do Norbit's Gambit, it can be quite important as your investment portfolio gets larger over time. For instance, if your portfolio grows to $100,000, which is achievable for a lot of people, then doing back and forth currency exchanges without Norbit Gambit could cost you $4,000. That's more than most people's monthly paychecks just given away. Besides using DLR as your select investment to do Norbit's Gambit, there are also many big Canadian companies we know of that are domiciled in both Canadian and US stock markets. So you can use them if you want. Some examples are Canadian banks, railroads, telecom companies, and tech companies. The only risk that you would get from using these companies is that you get daily fluctuations because stocks tend to move on news that affects the business. So I'll show you some examples. So we have TD and that conversion is 1.4154, which is very close to the actual rate of 1.4151. Then we have CP at 1.4188 converted, which is slightly higher than the actual rate. Then we have BCE at 1.4152, which is pretty much the same as the actual rate. And then lastly, we have Shopify at 1.4208. Although the currency exchanges isn't exact, it's still extremely close and it's much better than going through the normal tradition of converting your money at a foreign exchange platform. One huge observation from checking the different dual listed companies is that the larger the share price, the bigger your advantage is with a foreign exchange. I'm not sure why, but it appears to be the case. So with TD and BCE, you get the lowest share prices, which gets you really close to the actual exchange rate. Meanwhile, with the higher share prices with CP and Shopify, you'll get a more advantageous foreign exchange rate that's actually higher than the actual rate. So that's all for this video. Remember to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy what I had to say. Let me know in the comments below how much US dollars you normally bring whenever you travel.